Welcome to the RPG Podcast. And we are live. Oh, God, Pat! Presented by Sheep. A Time Wheel Production. Julius Anglicas. Uh, I think I said it right. That was pretty good. That was definitely one of the better ones. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, I know you're fighting for the 205 belt on the 16th in Bellator mm-hmm. on Showtime. How's the, how, how are you feeling? I feel everything. Excited, scared, nervous, happy. Uh, I mean, it's a big opportunity. So it's, I always thought I'll fight for a title like within like a year or a year and a half. I definitely did not think it's going to be this soon. So it caught me off guard, but I mean, an opportunity knocks on your door, you have to take full advantage of it. So um, I think I'm ready to just do my best and see what happens. That's all you can do. You've been preparing, yeah. you know. How long have you been fighting, you know? I've been fighting for, I think, about seven years. Okay. I started around age 24. Uh, That's a little late for, nor, uh, nor, you know, some people. Yes, because I had to... School was the thing that was on our minds. Like, oh, after high school, you have to jump in right into college. And during college, I was wrestling. So I, was, I had classes, I had sports. There was no extra time to do anything else. So I kind of had to wait till I entered my master's program. And that's when I had most more free time. Wow. Wrestling was done. And uh, I transferred to Lindenwood, which was five minutes away from the gym. Uh, so yeah, I had a car, much more free time. Wrestling was over. And I'm like, well, I definitely want to keep competing. I definitely want to do something more exciting. And I just figured fighting would be that next thing to explore so i think around ag at 24 i just jumped right in and didn't look back well you were so you were competing uh, you know as a a college wrestler that whole time so that's that counts in my book (laughs) what were you what were you going to school for what did you get your bachelor's in uh i wanted to be a physical education teacher okay so like yeah so my education is master's in uh teaching K through 12. But the second I got my degree, I'm like, uh, I don't want to do this. Ah, you don't want to teach kindergartners and or uh, high, high school been, students? That, that would have been my uh, first guess, like uh, elementary school. Uh, high school, middle school, it's like, uh, I figured elementary would be more fun, play any games, whatever you want. But I don't know if I figured since I'm still young, I don't want to follow that traditional path of school, school, jump straight into work. It's like, when do I get to do what I want to do? So I just figured I'll give my best shot with fighting. If it works out, great. Once it's done, I'll have a degree to fall back on to and do something. Totally. I always have a way to make money or find jobs. So I just figured I'll do something once for myself. You got to, you know, put your, uh, you got to dive in and go for it. Yeah. And you can't be like halfway a fighter. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) Because you're not going to win unless you're like John Jones or something, maybe Mm -hmm. because he's like a freak. But so you get the fights coming up Mm -hmm. and uh, you got like one week, just about a little over a week. What are you What are you doing to get ready? Uh, right now, I think it's mainly just about recovery. All the All the hard work is done. You can't. It's too late to push for more. I like it. Yeah. It's 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 too late to like get cramped and extra work. I mean, this is the time where it's like you're starting to feel that way. It's like, uh, okay, let's do another workout where I'll do a hundred rounds of hard sparring just to sneak it in just to make sure that i have it no like last week i did it all we felt it that i have it in me to do everything so right now it's just too late to do it all so recover 
because it's weird to feel recovered throughout the whole camp you feel beat up mm -hmm. you feel achy you feel in pain so for you that feels normal so the second you start to feel more recovered especially next week that's when like also different mind tricks start like going it's like oh i feel like i didn't do anything the whole camp because i just feel too good like i need to go lift weights or something but no you want that that feeling of itchiness or just energy flowing through you because that's what's going to help you perform um so it's i'm trying not to listen to what my mind is telling me or not it's like nope you do need to rest um, don't go much harder anymore just now just keep it sharp workout short get the sweat going um so yeah it's uh, it's definitely it's harder a bit, it's a little bit harder because it's like, just like not do something right you're changing things up but uh, you do get tired of training like right now it's like okay finally we'll get to tone it down as well and not do as much but once you recover you feel like oh man i should have done so much more should have done a thousand push-ups before bed every night blah 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 but no i know i was tired during practice i know i pushed it hard i did my part that's it now now it's just cruise stay sharp and rest that's hard to do but i feel like if you could literally not work out for the next seven eight days you would be like Fresh as a daisy, right. ready to ready to kill this dude. Exactly. How do you how do you think about opponents? Like, are you, do you think about do you try to get yourself angry about them, or or just not really think about them at all? Uh, each time it's a little bit different because I still try to find that perfect middle ground. Like, do I stay angry? And sometimes that was too much to think about. Sometimes I try to be calm and not think about it till the last moment because like, you know you can turn it on 15 minutes before you have to go. So yeah. why, well, why would you have to turn it on like two weeks before? Yeah, It's just too much stress. And like, I like I, that. I didn't like to deal with that stress. I know for a fact if I need to get ready right now, I could get myself like mentally ready in the yeah. next few minutes. But it's like just because if you're chilling right now and you relax, you feel like, oh no, it's it's not gonna happen. I won't be able to do it. So I must be focused and angry for the next few weeks, all the way all the way until the fight. And, yeah, uh, that's draining. It is. It could be draining. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Some some people, for some people, that works, and. I think it worked for me as well. Just because like I was constantly ready, I was constantly visualizing, but just the extra tension with through such a long period of time, it is too much. You don't want to deal with that. You don't want fighting consume you your life mm -mm. and everything that you do outside of it. Like I told everybody in, in many interviews, like I still don't consider myself as a fighter. I'm I'm just a random guy who wants to be a fighter like seriously like i just i'm just a random guy who wants to be one of the cool kids one of the fighters and i definitely don't want to stress over it at the beginning of my career i was stressing all the time but i'm trying to find that perfect ground where i can still live my life but i know i can always turn it on I mean, I'm ten and one, and now fighting for a title. Like, you know it, what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. So, so I'm just playing with that to to make it better. That's that's uh, yeah. All I over mean, the place. No, no. I uh, <laughs> like because Michael Jordan would talk about how he would, you know, think of his opponent and think of something that they did to upset him, and he would use that as fuel to help you know make him play harder in the, in the mm -hmm. game but i'm sure he didn't do it for the weeks ahead of time it was just like that yeah. night like right before the game started you'd be like he said something about my mom i'm gonna i'm gonna murder this fool or something so yeah. you can 
find that energy, you know, like you said, uh, like right upon game time, right mm-hmm. or right before the fight, you know, you don't want to do it too much before that probably. And, and visualizing is enough because like there is difference between like visualizing and constantly thinking about the fight versus being amped up and ready to go all the time. So yeah. I think I did not like that part. So I still do a lot of visualizing. I go through all my good scenarios, bad scenarios in my head of like me being in bad positions and trying to overcome that. So I noticed that doesn't put too much stress on you because you're not like freaking out, but you are giving time and you're thinking about it and you are experiencing something in, in your head. Um, I think one of the good things I heard, um, I think it was Eddie Alvarez talking about his one of the fights and how he said that it, there is just positions, like there's good position, like there's no bad positions, it's just positions. So I'm like, huh, yeah, like if I'm in a bad position, no, it's just position. You know what to do. You know the answer to it. Just work your way out of it. He said something like that, something about just being positions. So I'm just starting to think about it that way. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm in trouble a little bit, but I know the answer to it. So, so that's all it is. It's just position. I mean, it's like disadvantage, but you know what you got to do to get yourself out of it. So fighting almost becomes not a fighting. It's just problem solving. It's like, huh, what you do from there? Okay, I just do this. While in amateur days, you would just freak out like, oh my God, like I'm in a deadly position. I'm about to lose or get hurt. No, it's just position. And there's ways to get out of it. So you know, how fast you just can do that. Yeah, like you, I've been in this position before. I've gotten out of this position. It's just a position and, and I'm going to do what I normally do. Um, like I know as I've been doing running sheath, uh, sheathunderwear.com, everyone out there for 10 years, to, uh, give or take. And in the early days I would freak out when we were like, we we're waiting on product to come in or sales were down and like, I'm thinking what's happening. I'm freaking out. But now when those, these things happen, I'm like, okay, I've been through this before. We always get out of it. Right. And it's just another, you know, uh, this is what happens in business and not you're in, you know, you know, the fight game is, is very similar. I find you're fighting, you know, for survival and, uh, legacy, uh, your reputation and achievement. You want to, you know, make something of your life in, in this is the one chance you get kind of. So they're very, they're very similar. And that's why I love talking to you guys. I've talked, we've a lot, most of my interviews are with fighters because it's the most interesting sport in the world. Um, it breaks all language barriers. You just, you know, what's happening when someone's yeah. fighting and the, the heart, you know, the will to keep fighting when you, you're getting beat. Like what happened with Nick Diaz the other uh, week, two weeks ago or whatever. I don't, you know who that is, right? Yeah. And, and he kind of just quit yeah. and people were like praising him for quitting and, I, and it's fine, but that's not the type of, you know, the mindset of a champion, I guess. You know, just you, you don't quit. You never, but sometimes you do. Ha- I mean, I've seen fights where I'm like, please just quit. Yes. <laughs> please just tap out. Yes. But he wasn't even hurt. But that, so that was, uh, that was interesting. What did you think about that? It, it's almost like a movie because he is like the guy who always come forward, come forward, not care about anything, like not care about damage or all the cuts. And, he he went through a lot, the whole suspension, and and he was always like a little bit against. Well, too much interviews and too much media would get to him a little bit, so you can kind of like almost see that little bit more like frustration. So 
it almost felt like a movie like he was this guy who would not care about his own damage and just go after people and now he just they brought him back and he like he like quits like him quitting was something that nobody expected and I almost don't want to say the word quit because he went further than most people in the world would like everybody would have quit halfway through the first round right and like he just went after it and yeah him quitting was definitely something nobody expected i did not expect it i can't even be mad at him for that yeah and most people were giving him like credit and just he made he, he made the choice he knew he knew he was taking he was right. not going to win the next two rounds so he went ahead and threw in the towel himself and he just went through too much like i could just see like i mean i could be completely wrong but i just feel like he just went through too much the suspension the media i'm sure people were talking blah 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 it's yeah it's just too much to handle so just like yeah i kind of felt sad for it so but yeah like how to say it definitely not hating him for that absolutely yeah. not yeah you can't hate him and he no. he has his legacy from his previous right. run uh you know in the ufc and this is just like maybe michael jordan going to try to play baseball you know he didn't make it mm -hmm. but he tried and, he, and so nick tried to come back it's not he's he's 38 and he's been out for five years and probably got a little i know he was making a lot of money with the weed business anyways okay. sometimes so sometimes you know when you're taken care of and you don't need to fight a lot of people fight because that's all they have to get out of whatever situation they're in right mm -hmm. is that how you were or what or did you grow up kind of just uh, like middle class normal yeah i mean we had like we were pretty successful but then like we went into bankruptcy back in lithuania so my parents came to the united states before me and my brother did um they came to the united states we thought it was going to be only for one year then it was so like okay one year no big deal we'll see them soon then it was two years then three years whoa so like we didn't see him for five years which it sounds like it would have been a lot but it was like a gradual warm-up like at first okay just one year we'll see you soon okay cool no problem and then just kind of got extended 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 so it was just it was ease into it of how long it's actually going to be and i'm sure they did not know that either mm -hmm. um, and yeah when we fixed our papers we came to united states we only thought it's going to be for the visit and i think it was summer of 2005 if i'm not mistaken and we thought it was only going to be for the summer and then we'll go back to Lithuania. How old were you? I was just about to turn 14. Okay, that's pretty young. Yeah. And uh, halfway through the summer, I think it was around my birthday, because my birthday is July 23rd. And I think end of July, we I went to summer school. Because during one dinner, we were just talking about Lithuania and here and staying or going back. And like, this is good. Like, there is a lot of opportunities here. It's a nice location. This episode is brought to you in part by Element Kombucha. It's a new sponsor. We're very excited. They sent me a care package and I drank them all. I can't even show you. I could show you this empty bottle right here, but uh, it's uh, Element Kombucha. They have CBD uh, um, infusions, THC free, really tasty blends. You know, kombucha is good for the gut bio so if you have been taking antibiotics it's always good to take some probiotics and element kombucha is sponsoring this show they're supporting us so we're asking you to support them they actually have really good prices it's like 10 15 bucks for a six or eight pack on their different options they have variety packs or you can just get the summer vibes blend whatever you want it's at elementkombucha.com 
promo code RPG11 will save you 11% on your purchase and they'll know that we sent you and we would appreciate the support. Last but not least, sheathunderwear.com, the greatest underwear on the planet, the underwear of legends, the underwear that keeps your balls from sticking to your legs. That's right. This is the best underwear because it keeps your boys cool. Check out sheathunderwear.com. Back to the show. And if we would go back, what would we do? Like, what do you do? And I mean, what, what, what does someone do in Lithuania? Like, play video games. games. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there's like, well, basketball, soccer, that's it. Um, so you play video games, crime. Yeah. But they are in Long Island. We're just like, huh? Schools have sports. I was working at the Schmidt's Market where I was just like stocking shelves with waters and sodas. That was my first job. I was making seven fifty. Like not bad. I I thought I was the richest man alive. <laughs> I was like, You're gonna pay me seven fifty an hour. <laughs> like that like that was unheard of. I was getting like a few hundred dollars a week. I'm like, oh my God, like no wonder everybody's coming to the United States. So, so we just figured like this is better. Like why to, why to go back? This is definitely land of opportunities. So we just made a decision right that same dinner to stay. The conversation started, and like half an hour later, we're like, "Yeah, let's stay." Nice. And the next week, we went to a summer school just to kind of learn a little bit more English, uh, meet some kids, and like get familiar with like the whole system and teachers so and but mostly just like learn the language a little bit better did you already speak pretty good english or decent at all i speak not so much but to understand it yes because english is like number one language in the whole world so back in lithuania like movies you hear them in english but like lithuanian voice is like speaking over it so subconsciously you hear like some words. Uh, you're learning. You're learning yeah. to listen. Like music, same thing. You're like you're listening, you're hearing. Movies, you're hearing. And so when I was here, it's like I could, like when people talk to me, I could understand. Mm-hmm. But my response would be just a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> fragmented sentences. Yeah. I like. Good, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Very good. But uh, we, we learned it quick because uh, it was just me and my brother in high school. Like we went to ESL program. I guess now they call it ELL. For the politically correct, a little bit more or something. Um, well, so what well, is the... Okay, so it would have been English second language. English what is, second language. In, uh, now what is it? English, English language learner. Ah. Because what if some this is not a second language for most some people? True. So somebody decided to just switch into English language learner versus English second language because what if it's not your second language? It's your third or fourth. It's a third, exactly. So we're just gonna switch it to English language learner, which I mean I guess makes sense, but at the same time I don't I was young so I would not have understood why it would have upset anyone. Yeah, I feel it would. I feel it was more upsetting adults than the kids. Um, yeah, the the we're re redefining everything these days. All the words are being right rewritten. So we so the things were a little bit slower in school for us because there was like extra help. There was a person in the class helping kids to like explain them better. They would mm-hmm. come up to you and like try to break it down if you don't understand the language a little bit. Uh, but it was mostly for uh, Spanish kids. Um, yes. So me and my brother had no way around it. I mean, sure, we had a little bit extra time to for stuff to break it down. For us to be like, oh, okay, I see what you mean. Okay. So we had to. We we were able to learn it much quicker because we just were forced to yeah. learn it more. We didn't have that that much help. That's but how you got to do it. Yes. Because I'm learning Spanish on uh, 
Duolingo, the app. <laughs> and, you know, you get these little practice sessions, but it's not until you um, immerse yourself in like Mexico or Spain or something where you would get that full experience. And you, yeah. you just are forced to speak it and then you'll, you'll, you'll learn. You'll learn quick. Yeah. Before you came, so, you know, when you were 14, uh, or maybe 13 when you came, mm -hmm. uh, and then you turned 14 while you're here or whatever, but in a, like, what did you think about America before you came? I, I wasn't sure what to think. Well, because a lot of I hear they everyone hates us, our, you know, America around the right. world. Yeah, it's there was slight of um, dislike, but that was because um, people liked us so much. So it was either you really really like it, it's great, or huh, like why do you like it so much? But all of that, it was just from because you don't know. Right. It's just what the rumor was. So right. Nobody really had any idea until you go there or just what you hear from your peers who went there to work. So for me, I was just like, I don't know what to think. I just sure. knew it's a place where people go to work, place where people go. And be, that's the place where most famous people we kind of look at yeah. like the musicians and singers and all the movies it's like huh, they, they do something right they, they're doing something good they, they, they get something but I wasn't really sure because I was too young to understand like the whole economics and the concept mm -hmm. of money because I wasn't working my parents were working I was just going to school and playing video games so but the the idea of living uh, how the living would look i just kind of imagined uh, the suburbs of like rows and rows and rows of houses that uh, they all look the same yeah and just yeah, like weird. house 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 so that's how that's what i expected to live in when i came but uh, it was just a house in the woods there were like some other houses, but it was like super private. Nice. So it was super nice. And I preferred that much, much better. But I literally thought it was like America. I just house, 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 house. house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, that's, that's interesting what you said about like the movie stars and musicians and mm -hmm. stuff. It is, I, I guess we are the... The capital of the world, kind of. Yeah, yeah. When now, it comes to stuff like that, for when sure. When it comes to stuff like that, now some people say like Japan is living ahead of us, like they in the future, or is it mm -hmm. China? I think Japan. I think Japan. Like, yeah, everybody who went there say like, man, they, them, those guys live in the future. But why are we not talking about them too much? Everybody talks about America. Yeah. Uh, not so much about Japan, place to go. Uh, so it is weird, but um, yeah, I would definitely say America is people that what people talk about and where everybody wants to go for work. Yeah. How did your dad? So your dad came here. Your mom and dad came here, mm -hmm. left you there for five years. What did he do to set you guys up? Uh, well, my parents got like divorced right before they left, but they kind of worked together. To, to help us so they weren't like complete like not talking Strangers. to each other yeah uh so yeah my mom got married within like i think on the third year when she was here so so when i go back to visit them I, like i stay with my mom and my stepdad mm -hmm. and my dad lives like 15 minutes away so i always got to see him so it's it's good like there's no drama no nothing but they both my mom and my dad, when I came here, they both worked um, where they stay with elderly people at their home, and they, they mm -hmm. take care of them like 24-7. Yeah, I forget what that's called, but they're um, el just like elderly care. Right, that's and they, they did that for a while, because I guess it was a place to stay, and they knew how to take care of people. 
So, like, my dad did that, like, a little bit longer than my mom did. Because my mom got married, she got settled, she moved on to, a, like, more uh, different jobs. So, I think my dad, like, was doing that a uh, little bit more, but, like, yeah. And each, each family is different. Some yeah, some so they, they, they just... Better than the other ones. They, but they, so they worked and saved money and just mm -hmm. until they could bring you and your brother mm -hmm. to America and, and you guys just stayed in Long Island, you said? Yes. Mm -hmm. Southampton. That's a nice area. Very nice area. <laughs> Very nice area. And everybody thinks like, oh, you must be rich. I'm like, uh, locals, not so much. Because I mean, there's people been staying from since, geez, just since forever ago. But yeah, the Hamptons wasn't, I guess, looked at as the rich place forever. Now, uh -oh. now it's kind of being pushed as the place to be, and all the big giant houses, nobody lives there. It's people from the city who Whoa. will come over the weekend. So in the winter, it's quiet. It's just locals, just normal people, and yeah, in the summer, boom, parties on every single big mansion. Where it's like, where were you guys here in the winter? It's like, they go back to the city. Wow. That must be nice. Mm -hmm. Having the summer house in the Hamptons. Yeah. We're not there yet. We're going to make a few more bucks. Exactly. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> exactly. So, and you still stay up in, uh, in that area? Mm -hmm. You still live there? Yes. Yeah, my parents still live there. So, right now, since fighting is my job, I stay in St. Louis. This is where... Uh -huh. Pretty much my job is I stay at my gym. Well, I have a studio. So I just go to the gym and I go home after every fight or like during holidays or if I get hurt. So I do try to go home a few times a week, I mean, a few times a year for like two weeks or so at a time. Um, so yeah, after this fight, I'll come back to St. Louis for a few days just to, depending how hurt I am, take care of business, mm -hmm. write out some checks, and then um, fly to Long Island to see my parents and hang out for a little bit. I got a couple of couple of questions. Mm -hmm. So, well, because we work with James Krause. Do you know who mm -hmm. James Krause is? Because I think he's in Missouri. Yes, he's in uh, Kansas City. He's three hours away from me. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you don't, even have you ever trained with him? I trained with him once when I went to um, uh, help um, Anthony Smith. Okay. When I went to help Anthony Smith, uh, for like two and a half weeks, uh, Kraus came um, the day before I left. So I was able to like roll with him a little bit. And he was cool, like super nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we like him. I like him. He's a great coach, I've, or at least from what I can tell. With the, that's what I've been the hearing as well. So yeah, so I'm like coaching a little bit. It's like okay, yeah, like, like it's good. It's simple. He breaks stuff down. Yeah, not too much ego, but at the same time, I only met him once. I don't know, was it right or so? But I only heard good things. So yeah, I only got to train with him uh, once, and um, he offered me. Uh, he invited me to over his gym in Kansas City to come out to help some of his 205ers. Yeah. Um, but I had to decline because I'm like, uh, like I'm in the camp, I'm training also. I won't be able to stop by. Just, so Anthony does Anthony Smith is in Missouri also? Saint, or, um, He's in Kansas uh, City? Where is it? Omaha? Okay, that's Nebraska. Uh, yeah. But, but you were, for those two weeks, you were like a sparring partner? Uh, yeah, I was just... Uh, pretty much main guy because he decided sometimes he goes to Kansas City because I drive three hours to Kansas City and then I drive three hours up. That's where Anthony Smith is. Uh. So sometimes Anthony goes to Kansas City or sometimes he goes to I think he goes to Kansas City. Um, um, yeah. Or sometimes he goes to a factory at uh, Colorado. Oh, nice. Um, That's where I'm at. I'm in Colorado. Okay. And uh, sometimes I guess he bounces back and forth with uh, Weidman in New York, I would say. I could be wrong. Don't quote me. But I've seen him like bounce back and forth. 
So he's kind of in the middle of all these gyms. He does have a gym in Omaha, but he doesn't have like too many training partners. So a few times he invited me over because his coach and my coach came from the same coach. Okay. So they kind of affiliate with us. So like we family in a way. I did not know mm -hmm. that till like a few years ago. Uh, my coach was like, hey, Julius, do you want to go train with Anthony? I'm like, cool, yeah, let's do it. So, but how, did the, how did, I mean, he he very well could have been the champion. When he got that illegal knee from John Jones, he could have just said, he could have won by default. And do you remember that fight I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Right, okay. So, um, but he, then he had a, I think he had a couple losses, but now he's on a on a tear. Yes, yes. And he's looking great. His last fight was amazing. And I, I would have to attribute that to him sparring with you, possibly. Well, for this, for this one, we didn't work together. Um, you haven't worked for his like last few fights, just because I've been busy as well. But when you, when you did, I was just joking anyways, but uh, when you did spar with him, how, did, how was that? How, like you're... Because uh, people say that, you know, the UFC is the ultimate, and then Bellator, and then PFL, or whatever, but... Some people are thinking AJ McKee, I think that's his name. Mm -hmm. AJ, uh, uh, you know, could very easily beat the uh, 145 Absolutely. UFC champ. Yeah. And how, so how do you feel you uh, measured up with Anthony? It was good competitive rounds. Because nice. here in St. Louis, I have a pretty good uh, system of how we do things. And when we spar, like, we go into a deep water sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, okay, Julius has a fight coming up. Okay, this week we'll do so and so many rounds. And within one round, I go to, with, like, a few different guys who yeah. are just waiting to jump in. And uh, so at that moment, I was used to that, that just sucky grind. Yeah. So me and him were just got into a war where it's just like I would beat him for 10 seconds then he would dig it out and then he would like put it on me for 10 seconds and then I would just beat him up for 10 seconds so and we had tons of fun like for me that was something I already did mm -hmm. but after we got done sparring like you almost gave him more confidence than me he was like oh my god that was the craziest spar I ever had like I'll be a world champion if I spar like this. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I've been doing everything right. Like, okay. Nice. So I like it to hear that from him. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I've been doing everything good and right. And uh, he was impressed by how we sparred. So all right, I'll, I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Because it's weird. In my gym, we don't have like UFC fighters or too many Bellator fighters. So when I look around, it's like, I think I'm working hard, but, and I see my partners working hard, but they're not in UFC or anything big. So am, am I, am I doing everything proper? Because in my mind, it's like all the UFC guys, all the big names are pretty hyped up. So I'm like, am I, I feel I'm working hard, but am I, I did not have yeah. like your reference to yes. something to look at. But the first time I went there, he like brought in another two UFC guys and I was able to hang with them. And sometimes like, I don't want to say outwork them, but I was definitely more like a more of a workhorse. And I'm like, huh? So, okay. Like I've, I've been doing everything good. Yeah. Because some people left the gym thinking the grass is greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. They need to go where the room is filled with D1 wrestlers and UFC fighters. And I realized that is not the case. There was that small question, not of leaving, but the question of, am I doing what am I supposed to do? Am I training like a champion? So when I got to train with them, it reassured me that, yes, I've been doing everything right. I don't need nothing else. I don't need to go nowhere. I'm fine with exactly where I am. And I'm fine with how I've been doing and training. So that gave me confidence. And um, 
definitely reassured me that I'm in a good spot. Awesome. That is a nice thing. Mm -hmm. I, I have those experiences with sheaths sometimes when you compare yourself to other companies and where we've come from and how far we've come and how well we're doing. It gives you like a little bit of confidence, like, okay, I'm on the right track. Right. We're doing the right thing. And we got awarded this, uh, like it's called Inc. 5,000 fastest growing companies. We're one of 5,000, so one of many, but that was pretty cool. I mean, there's definitely more than 5,000. There's yeah. definitely there's people who are trying to, and being being in that list, I think it's amazing. It was pretty cool. I, I And, um, you know, but aside from that, <clears throat> there's a lot, <clears throat> there's a, Jesus, there's a lot of talk about fighter pay recently, mm -hmm. you know, Jake Paul and, and Dana White. And I think McGregor just posted something about pay-per-views or whatever, but I've heard that Bellator takes pretty good care of their fighters. It would, yeah, you would agree. Yes, absolutely. Well, I think my first, um, my first contract was, I would say, pretty standard, just like how it probably would be in UFC as well. Yeah. But I was really surprised when we negotiated um, how crazy bump it was. Awesome. And even my manager was saying, like, dude, like, this is one of the best deals, like, we ever made. Like, what? And... Um, they also say, like, with Bellator, you can re renegotiate better, while with UFC, you can't renegotiate unless you're, like, one of the top, top guys. If you kind of, like, caught somewhere in the middle, sorry, this is what you're getting. Like, yeah. We'll talk to you two weeks from now. Bye-bye. Uh, so, I definitely i am happy with the place I am. I'm happy I did not jump with the UFC. I'm sure I'll, I will be in UFC, uh, but there is no reason for me to rush it. I mean, right. at the end, being financially stable is what's the most important. Totally. It's it's literally, th that's why we do it. It's our job. You need to pay bills. Yeah. Uh, being famous and that, paying bills, it's, it's, no, it's craziness. So that's, I, yeah. That's what Derek Derek Lewis, the you know heavyweight mm -hmm. black beast. He was I just saw him on uh, this show called Hot Ones, where they eat hot wings while they have the interview. It's pretty funny. You should definitely watch it. Anyone out there, Hot Ones, very funny. But he was saying he's like, I don't care about the belt. I don't care about the fame. Just give me the check. As long as you, I'm getting. Uh, this is my job. I'm pay me to fight, and I'll fight whoever, whenever. And and that's a a new perspective. You, I've only ever heard you know, like Michael Bisping or Conor McGregor, they said they want that belt and that's the pinnacle and that's mm -hmm. the goal. But there's also room for a lot of people in the middle. Like not everyone can be champion. Right. Exactly. It, it's funny how when I started fighting, it was almost like a very shared idea that I heard from everybody which was almost sounded stupid to me because of how everyone shared the same idea everybody were repeating how they want to be champion and best in the world now from hearing that like sounds cool like amazing but it was very odd to me how it was like the thing of mma i want to be the best in the world I'm like Where'd you guys hear that? Like, who said that? That makes all of you repeat that. Because none of you working crazy hard. I mean, yeah. you guys working, but it's almost like a thing to say, oh, I want to be best in the world. But it made me feel like none of you really believed it because somehow all of you are saying it. In wrestling, everybody worked hard and everybody were just trying to win matches. Like, you go in, kick ass, whatever happens, happens, move on to the next one and do it again. It doesn't matter, win or lose, whatever, 
go to the next one. While we're here, the second I jumped into MMA world, oh, I want to be best in the world. This guy, oh, I want to be a champion. Another guy, oh, I want to be a best in the world. I'm like, why, how, why is it? It felt a little bit not real mm-hmm. of how much everybody shared that same quote. I'm like, did someone say that? Like, where, where did that came from? Yeah. Because it just didn't sound like genuine. It sounded like just a thing to say. Yeah. So, Cliche or something. Ooh. I mean, I mean, I guess we all want to be right. Just do, do your recognized. Best. Yeah. Do your best and sure you can strive for more, but, and like, it'll get you where it'll get you. Just do your best. But yeah, like that quote just sounded like it was like already reassuring them. So it almost made them work less hard. Ah, I like that's a good point. It was like, oh, I want to be there. So I know they just. Did. You're nowhere near that. Don't. You're looking way too far ahead. Just the next fight. Yeah. Try to win that one. Right. Uh, and then when you're fighting for a championship, then you're like, okay, I'm going to be the best in the world. I'm going to be the best in the world right. or whatever. I've said this a few times. I'll say it one more time. And I'll probably say it again, but when when Rose Namajunas was fighting Zhang Wei Li for the belt on this last fight, and I guess she did it every fight, from what I, I heard, somebody uh, mentioned that I think it was Jason Knight. He just fought for PFL, but he or she, she's like, I'm the best in the world. I'm the best in the world. And you know, mm-hmm. like, but she's in the ring fighting for the belt, and she goes and one head kick knocks out Zhang Wei Li. And uh, then she is the best in the world. So there's something to it. But when you're so far removed, like you're just one of many thousands, yeah. um, you know, maybe be the best in your city or something. Right. Small, best small in your goals. gym. Like yeah. Small, reachable goals. And all those little things will make a big thing. Like, That's a very true. Because like you said, it almost gives them... Um, license to work less hard because it's like they're playing like a mental trick with their game right. or with their head and I think small increments there's a philosophy in Japan called Kaizen and it's just every day just a little bit better a little bit better what can you find that's wrong because you can't just all of a sudden be the best in the world you have to incrementally mm-hmm. step your way up towards that and you can't look too far ahead Sometimes you need to stay within reason yeah. of reality for for this season of your you know life. And then as you progress, I mean, one day I you know I was just talking about your story and how a lot of fighters say that interviewers ask them the same questions over and over again when you go through those um, like fight week and you just same question. Is that your experience? Uh, yesterday, yes, I had four interviews back to back. And, uh, well, it was funny. The uh, manager was like, hey, can you, Bellator wants to do an inter- interview. And we made a uh, reservation time slot, okay. yeah, reservation for that. And I thought it was just going to be Bellator doing an interview. But no, it was Bellator scheduled a bunch of interviews with a bunch of other people to, to do it with me. So I was like, Oh well, I should, probably should have asked how long it was gonna take. Yeah, because I thought it was gonna be like twenty minute thing. It turned out an hour and twenty minute thing. So it was four different interviews, and everybody asked the same question, and it was weird. I'm like, well, should have just done like a Zoom meeting and asked questions. Right. Everybody were. I remember everybody were asking me the question of uh, if I win this fight who I would prefer to fight out of uh, Corey and... Uh, Bader? Bader. And I'm like... Ah. And each time, I would like get shorter and shorter at, at like explaining my answer. But then I'm like, nah, like I'll, I'll, I'll still explain it because, I mean, it wasn't his fault. Right. But, um, yeah, like yesterday was definitely was a lot of repeating and it's weird each time or even each week your opinion might change on things yeah or you might find something to say something differently or 
completely opposite than what you said, like in the previous one. So it's that would have been funny if you changes. answered like four different, completely different answers on all different uh, on the different interviews. That would have been funny. I I did a funny thing uh, when uh, I knew I was fighting for the title, but it wasn't announced yet. Like Monday, I signed the contract. Wednesday, I have the interview, and I knew they were going to announce like next week or so. But they announced it that side, I believe. And I'm doing like a little interview on the on the phone, and we're talking how like on the alternate, and it's possible for me to fight anyone. And I'm like, yeah, that would be crazy. Like, what if next week I'm just like gonna fight for a title? I mean, how crazy would that be? And I knew I'm fighting uh-huh. already, but I was just like pretending I did not know. So that was that was a little. That funny. is fun. I was just, I was just like, I was like, yeah, how, that would be crazy to happen. Like me fighting for a title, but what are the odds of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you you worked your way up to that position. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. fighters in the UFC, you just get like one or two wins, and then you can fight for the belt if if you're good looking enough. I think it like you have to be good looking, charismatic, talk shit have a lot of fans on your social media and you can kind of talk your way into a fight sometimes. I don't know if it works quite like that with Bellator. I'm sure it could, Yeah, but there is less cameras for Bellator. Mm-hmm. No, nobody's jumping in front of the camera trying to do a funny dance to get some social media exposure. Right. In UFC, there's like so many cameras left and right that if you're a good fighter, great, but you know you have that chance to get your views up and followers up if you do something a little different. Right. And I feel there wasn't so much of a factor back in the day or even just five years ago. I mean, Sure, some people were exploring that field of using the cameras to their advantage, but now it's like definitely, and kind of feel like UFC is somewhat focusing a little bit on that. They starting to realize like, huh, like the, the people like seeing weird stuff, so let's let's give some weird people a little bit more screen time just to build them up. Um, it's taking on a little bit of a, a, re, a like a professional wrestling right sort of theme. But yet they talk they say that about Bellator. I'm like, no, UFC is turning into that. It's just they disguise it better. They, they almost like doesn't make you think that way. Right. But no, you guys just put a camera on some goofball with funny hair and he gets publicity. Like, yeah, he gets publicity. So he does all the he does all the show for you. So people focusing on him versus the UFC itself creating uh, some kind of WWE yeah. show. Like so the fighter does it for them. So and I kind of prefer Bellator for that reason because I'm not too. I don't think I would have it in me to jump in front of the camera and do something bizarre to fight for extra views. Yeah, like put on a show and dance. <laughs> put on a show and dance. I mean, if you have it in you, great. Yeah. More power to you. Um, and maybe I'm just hating because I don't have it in me to, because I can't dance. All you got to do is beat that guy, though. You beat the guy that does all the talking, and then you are, just jump right ahead of him. That's... Yes, say. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff got ahead, ahead of him, but still, everyone's going to... If you don't have something to show consistently, yeah, then it's definitely going to be a little bit more of a struggle to put a camera on you because you're not generating the views. And Bellator is not focusing too much on that. It's just more about just, just fight. Yeah. So I kind of like that. It's less drama, Let's less fakery um now will i go to ufc eventually i think i will i'm i'm gonna do as much as i can in bellator build my name and if ufc offers something amazing 
like we said, money talks, we got to pay the bills, we got to uh, do good financially. So if that's how it's, it's going to play out, then we'll go there. But right now, I mean, UFC called me halfway through my first Bellator fight to ask if I was one fight deal with Bellator or, or multi-fight deal with them. We knew they were going to call, but Bellator presented the contract and should we wait, should we not wait? And we just decided to take it. And I'm glad I did because who knows at what kind of position I would be stuck with UFC and with what kind of pay and, and how I would be reacting with all that extra drama shenanigans, shenanigans. Drama and shenanigans. Uh -huh. so i mean i think card like all the planets lined up perfectly for me at the moment um so i'm happy with it and what else i was going to say the ufc part oh everybody's asking me julius when you're going to go to ufc julius when you're going to go to ufc i'm like and i can't get mad at them because they don't know it's just that's the thing people who don't know how fighting works ufc is the top the best nothing else matters uh, go fight for ufc but i'm like uh, there is a situation with the money so i'll i'll stay with bellator there is no reason but everybody just wants to see that you there because that's the only thing you know you turn on the phone the social media UFC, 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 this and that, da, da, da. Oh, when we're going to see you there. Mm, I'm not, time will come yeah. right now. I don't really want to chase the screen time or something. I want to do good financially because I'm not going to do this for a long time. And like we said earlier, paying bills and being financially stable, that's what we all after. Literally, that's what everybody's yeah. after for. Take care of your family, security and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of like Patty the Batty, Pimrose, I think, he, he waited like five years. He just made it to the UFC like a couple weeks ago. And um, Adesanya waited. And, and like a lot of fighters go in super early, like um, that one kid, this super karate kid got um uh, damn i can't think of his name but he went into Wonderboy? no dave help me out with the rainbow hair N that guy no his good that's sugar sean o'malley yeah. i'm thinking of sage northcut okay sorry thanks dave i thought he was doing pretty good though i mean even though he lost he I went he was doing pretty good now he got released i mean he's fighting in some other organization and but he was going to be the next great thing. And then he lost, lost, lost. And now he's out. And it's just like, had he waited and yeah. developed because he was only like 22. So if he had waited till he was like 30, 31, mm -hmm. he could have been a monster and he might come back cause he's still young. Right. Absolutely. But you waiting, um, until you're ready or, you know, is I think a, mm -hmm. a wise decision because mm -hmm. you just, make yourself better and better and better build up your confidence do those walkouts get those jitters out i've done this a hundred times so when you do make it it's just another day you know another walk in the park yeah yeah i thought uh, uh north could have like three or four fight win streak before he got released he he was, and then he. I think he lost a couple just because huh, okay. he was a karate guy, and then he got right. choked out a couple times through, with wrestlers, and that huh. tends to happen with those guys. But you're on the right track. You're fighting for the belt, Bellator, October sixteenth, um, two two oh five, weight class. That's going to be exciting. We're going to be watching. I'm very excited for you. Thank but you. Best of luck. Um, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. I do I do need to run. I'm sure you have some things to do. I want to respect your time as well. So thank you. And thank you. Uh, we'll be in touch. You got a care package on the way. It, thank you. It'll be there probably tomorrow or Saturday. And uh, just thanks for agreeing to work with us. I wish you all the best. And we'll, we'll, we will talk again soon. Yes, absolutely. Everyone else, thank you for joining us once again. See you next time. Peace.